for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins on the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. It's Mad Money Shot. Snub of the Mad Cheese, as always. It's Madden 24 Ratings Week. That's right, Madden 24 is a month away. And I just got done playing some games because the beta is still, still live. And I got to be honest, it's a really fun game. Uh, but at the end of the day, this is the week. Every year they do this where they release like top 10 players from every position uh, throughout a whole week. So this entire week, every time it comes out, I'm going to give you guys the players' names. And I'm also going to give you my reactions to their ratings because that's something that I think makes this video unique. Is that every year, you know, they, we don't always agree with EA. EA is not always right when it comes to the ratings. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove that to you guys in a minute here when I tell you guys some of the top 10 safeties and top 10 receivers. Uh, because some of these, you know, ratings just don't make a lot of sense. For the most part, they're usually pretty accurate. But there's a lot that is usually off. So I like to make videos about this. If you guys want to see more videos like this throughout the week, because I do plan on doing one every single day, uh, make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section. I'm going to go ahead and start off with safeties. I actually have top 20 safeties, not just top 10, which is typical. Um, but, you know, I'm going to go through the first uh 20 through 11 and i'm not really i don't really have a lot of issues with these safeties it's more when i get into the top 10 that i have a that i might have you know some things here and there that i don't necessarily agree with the one that i do disagree with the most here is chauncey gardner johnson he's still rated in 84 which i think is how he ended last year uh i mean he really had um you know he had six interceptions last year which tied for the league lead and he did that in only like 12 games because he was injured for a good portion of them. So that to me, I mean, he not only that, but he's basically like a slot corner, like a man-to-man -man slot corner. So to me, he's a really good player in both aspects. Probably should be rated a little bit higher, maybe more like top 15. I'm not really gonna complain too much. I think Ty Hufunga is a guy who also should be rated a little bit higher, but once again, not gonna make a huge stink about that. What I will make a huge stink about is in the top 10, because the top 10 is a little bit um, you know, this is this is holy. Uh, this is whole, this is sacred territory here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna start from the top. Derwin James being the highest rated safety at a 95. I love Derwin James. We all love Derwin James. He's a great player. But I've been saying for a long time, and I think that um, you know the statistics agree that Minka Fitzpatrick's probably the best safety in the league. And I know a lot of Steelers fans might agree with me in the comment sections there. The last two years I did this list. Minka Fitzpatrick wasn't even in the top 10. I think he started last year like in 89, which was just outside the top 10. Uh, so at least they finally corrected that mistake. And it took a first-team All-Pro six-interception season, once again, tied for the league lead for them to, to boost Minka Fitzpatrick up this high. But at the end of the day, I still think he's the best player. Derwin James was second-team All-Pro. He's a great player. Uh, I can't really make too much of a stink. I, mean, I love the physical profile. Everybody loves the physical profile of a six foot three Derwin James with the speed that he has. So I'm not complaining too much. But I do think that Mika Fitzpatrick, who is a three-time All-Pro, by the way, I think Derwin James is only two-time. Uh, so there is something to be said there. But I think Mika Fitzpatrick was three-time All-Pro first team, too, which is like the major difference. Derwin James, I think, only made first team once as a rookie. So, like I said, to me, Mika Fitzpatrick probably has a better case for best safety. But like I said, he's been underrated for so long, it's good to finally see him on this list as high as he is. Justin Simmons is another one. Guy who's been very consistent throughout his career. Also led the league in interceptions last year with six. Um, coming in at number three, his rating hasn't seen a move. Even though he led the league in interceptions last year, his rating seems like it's been a 92 for like five years. So that's that's a little bit, um, you know, I, I think I would kind of have um, maybe just they're all the, these three guys' ratings a little bit closer. If Derwin James is a 95, cool. But they make Fitzpatrick should be like a 94, and maybe Justin Simmons is like a 93, 94. You know, they, I just feel like they're, they're a little bit further apart than they should be. After that, I really don't have a lot of issues with the list. There are a lot of guys here. It seems like they kind of get by on reputation, though. Guys like Harrison Smith, who is still a pretty good playmaker, but I don't think he's as good as he once was. Uh, and I feel like a guy like Buda Baker should probably be a little bit higher, too. I think he should be close to top five. I don't know if he would knock out Jesse Bates or Kevin Byer because I do think they're probably a little bit better as far as playmakers but at the end of the day i do feel like uh, this list uh, could you know it could move in a couple different directions now for receivers they only gave us a top 10 list which is fine i mean it would be nice to get a top 20 because there's a couple names missing here and i'd like to see how far away they were we'll start at the top justin jefferson 99 overall not arguing with that at all i really was on the you know before this i was like i hope john i, I thought justin jefferson should make 99 and he deserves it but i also feel like there's a couple guys here that probably could have made 99 as well. 
guys like Tyreek Hill. I mean, he had a monster statistical year. Me personally, I mean, he comes at number two to 98. If I had to choose between the two, I'm taking Tyreek Hill. He's way more of an explosive player. They're both high volume guys. Obviously, Justin Jefferson's bigger. I feel like his catch radius is probably better. Um, you know, he's more of, to me, he's like more of a possession guy. But I want an explosive player like Tyreek Hill if I'm choosing between the two. And I feel like Tyreek Hill could have easily been a 99 as well. Uh, Devontae Adams. I mean, what did he do last year to drop from a... Wasn't he a 99 to start of last year? What did he do to drop two ratings points? I mean, I think he led the league in touchdowns. Um, he had just as good of a statistical season as he always had. And he did it with a much less you know quarterback compared to what he had in Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers. I mean, I'm not saying Derek Carr isn't good. He's a good quarterback, but... To put up the type of numbers he put up, regardless of quarterback, says to me he should at least be a 98. I don't know why they're so stingy when it comes to giving out these high ratings, like Devontae Adams doesn't deserve it or Tyreek Hill doesn't deserve it. They could have 399 overall receivers. Nobody would. I don't think anybody would have. Their heads would have exploded. So to me, you know, those three guys to me are kind of interchangeable. They could all be considered the number one receiver in the league at any point in time. And to see their uh, ratings this far apart, even even though it's only a point. Like I said, I just feel like, you know, Devontae Adams, to make him a 97 to me is kind of criminal. He should at least be a 98. <laughs> that's, I guess that's my biggest issue. Uh, it's only a point, but it's like I said, those, those small points matter. Uh, moving on after that, Stefan Diggs, cool with that. Cooper Cup, cool with that. Jamar Chase, though, I feel like, I mean, I think he missed a couple games last year, but he's, he should be higher. You know what I mean? It's like he, he, he's, a, he's such a great player. He should be like a 95, 96 as well at this point. But I'm sure he'll get there pretty quickly. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, a lot of people are trying to act like he's spent for some reason, but they got him as a 93 here in Madden, which I totally agree with. Uh, after that... This is where, I mean, number one, I don't. I definitely don't think Terry McLaurin is better than A.J. Brown. I mean, A.J. Brown, to me, should probably be in the 93, 94 range as well. I mean, I know I'm an Eagles fan, so a lot of people are going to call me a homer. But that guy was just straight up. If you watch the Titans game, if you watch the Steelers game, I think he had three touchdowns in both of them. He was just, just, just bullying everybody. And that's the type of player that he is. Like, I don't really think, I don't remember Terry McLaurin having a three-touchdown game last year. And I know he doesn't have as good of a quarterback or as good of an offense and stuff like that. But none of these guys, I don't really remember any of these guys dominating on, on a regular week to week basis like A.J. Brown did. So to me, 91 is way too low. He is much, to me, he should be close to the top five, not necessarily in the top five, but he should be kind of like in the 94 range. I think Jamar Chase should be higher. I don't know. It's just to me, that, that rating probably bothers me. I definitely don't think that Terry McLaurin, and I like Terry McLaurin, he's a really good player, but I don't think he's better than A.J. Brown. He doesn't bully people. I mean, he's a speedster, and you love guys like that, but he doesn't bully players, or he doesn't bully entire defenses like A.J. Brown did. I mean, even in the Super Bowl, that touchdown he caught against the, the Chiefs, there was two guys in coverage. Like, he did that all year, double coverage, snatching the ball for, away from, you know, tight coverage, whatever. Like, to me, A.J. Brown should be much higher. Then number 10, we got Amari Cooper. The number 10 spot's a tough spot because that's the last spot for a lot of guys. I can think of guys like like Mike Evans has nine straight years of 1,000 yards. And last year, Tom Brady, I know it's Tom Brady, but last year, Tom Brady really wasn't playing that great. So you could say that you know he was kind of like check down king last year as he as his arm was just kind of fading at this point in his career and he still put up a thousand yards he'll probably put up a thousand yards with baker mayfield the number 10 spot for receiver could have been a lot of guys but i guess i'm just kind of on this thing like mike evans has been so consistent for so long he probably should get the benefit of the doubt but there's a lot of guys like i said there's a lot of guys in the league that could be number 10 let me know in the comment section what you guys think. And that's it. Thanks for watching, man. Money Shit Out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.